they got going on. What's new? Well, are you writing down everything you eat? I don't want you doing it on my fitness thing. I want it in paper and pen. It's so easy to go, you know, it's so easy to just push the button and have no clue. You know, no, you don't really own it. When you have to get that stupid little pen out and you have to write it on that stupid little piece of paper, you own it. Okay. By this way, you're just pushing a button. really prefer the electronic but if you're struggling I really think that you have to write it because then you can really own it a lot better if you write it out as opposed to just yeah because a lot of that stuff is already stored in your phone you know and it's just okay I had this I had this but when you have to think about putting it out there and you see and then I always tell people if they want do it for a week and then call me and let's visit it and see what you're doing do you do the same thing every day? Do you eat the same thing every day? Exactly. The, the funny thing is, is that we always have been taught we have to cut our calories, we have to cut our calories, but you still have to get enough calories. Okay. Okay. When, you, when you do it, I really think it's important, say for breakfast, I'll give you an example of what, like my breakfast is this. It's probably a lot compared to what a lot of you guys eat, but I, I need it to counter out what I burn. So breakfast, it's usually one egg, two whites, and I put spinach, peppers, and onions, and I do a half a cup of either oatmeal or cream or wheat. That's my breakfast. And it is. And then two and a half hours later, three hours later, I have a protein drink. And then two and a half, three hours after that, I have lunch, which consists of a fair amount of protein, four to five ounces. It consists of a half a cup of brown rice, and it consists of a cup of vegetables. Okay? But I... Because the way I exercise, I, what I have been told by my trainer is that I burn hot. Because, you know, you, you ramp that metabolism up, okay? And then two to three hours after I have my lunch, I have another protein drink. And then I have dinner, which is a protein source and a vegetable, and that's, I'm done. And I'm done. So, I mean, I probably get close, probably close to 2,000 calories. But I'm burning it. I'm, I'm way beyond calorie-wise expenditure versus what I'm taking in, you know. Um, but it, it's really important that you write that you had that egg or two eggs, scrambled, boiled, whatever. You put so, so you learn you learn your calories, but you learn your grams of protein with it. And that's if you went to Dr. Yadigar, he would tell you he wants you to count cal count your calories too. Because, you know, your calorie goal is 1,200 to 1,400 calories. Do you know what your calorie goal is? What, do you know what kind of calories you're getting? So we have to do is we have to look at your, your food law and see what you're doing. Are, are you doing more processed food? Are you, you know, because I did have someone come to me and she would bring me her food logs and half of them were frozen burritos and, you know, and that yeah. kind of stuff. And, and that, you know, that really, I mean, I shouldn't say it doesn't count, but it's not the right stuff. And the other thing is, is do you have issues with your thyroid? So have you been and gotten your thyroid meds adjusted? Maybe you need to make a trip and get that done. But you still may need to go and, and visit your doctor who takes care of your thyroid and, and get your and have your levels checked because that could be part of your wall. And we need to look at what you're doing. And we need to look at what you're doing. There's you're either doing too much of something, could be not enough, not drinking enough water. I always, I always tell people, you know what? I always kind of, kind of gauge my pee, how it looks. Is it, is it, is fairly it clear? Is it, is it dark? Yeah. Is it what else is cooking? Yeah. And maybe you're having an issue with pre-made. Maybe you need to go to 
a powder and mix it with either water or non-fat milk or something like that. Because a lot of those ones that you make yourself aren't so thick. Yeah. I mean, you can dilute them, those real thick ones out, but then people say they don't like them just because they, they're kind of watery kind of. Getting, you're putting too much thickness together because the milk did, and then with that thick protein and you're just putting too much into your body you're probably getting honestly you're probably getting a little too much fat you know you're getting crampy gassy It's the um, the the iced tea. Uh -huh. I like the iced tea, and then I mix it with um, lemonade crystal light, mm -hmm. and it's like an Arnold Palmer. Like, and like the fuzzy navel yes, that's nectar, the the protein that we're giving at the hospital now, it's um basically you get a water bottle, and what they do is they pour out an ounce of water, and they put an ounce of the protein concentrate in it. And you, you just had the pro the protein. Yeah. It wasn't that bad. Oh, it's kind of like a peachy, kind of creamy I kind of But what do I tell you guys? You know what? The calorie goal is 1,200 to 1,400 calories. And I tell you, you're not going to hit it at a month. You may, more than likely won't even hit 1,200 at about two months. And so that's you know, that's kind of, you know, important not to worry yourself to death that, oh my gosh, I'm not going to get my calories in. That's why we have you doing the protein, the eight, you know, your 80 to 100 grams of protein or your 60 to 80 grams of protein if you're diabetic, right? So you're a week, you're not even to the point, I think it's Sunday that you move forward with soft texture food. And remember, you're going to set that clock as a half an hour for your meal. Okay, so when you start, everybody, how many people started with an egg after their, when they first egg started egg with an egg? And it was, the, to me, it was the best tasting egg I ever tasted. But the bottom line is, is that you give yourself a half an hour to eat. If at the end of that half hour, three quarters of the egg is still sitting there, you're done. That's cold. As anybody who's been there, like most of us, the, it will come, but it will come in time, okay? You, you have to really sit down when you hit Sunday, breakfast, lunch, dinner, protein drinks in between, water kind of throughout there. Remember, nothing 15 minutes before, nothing during, and nothing for that half hour after. Give yourself a half an hour with your meal. If it's not done, give it to the dog, give it to the kids, give it to your husband, give it to someone, but you're done. Huh? And you know what? You put that food in your mouth and chew, 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 chew until you you find your teeth again. You know, you're gonna you're gonna find your teeth. You know, just you know, you've chewed and taken that stuff, used your tongue, macerated up into the roof of your mouth. You know, that kind of thing. Okay. Don't. And the one thing I want, especially you new you new folks to know, don't be afraid of food. How many people were afraid of food when you got food, got to go to food? I don't know, well, I'm so far out. One of the issues that I'm having is that food is just food. It's just, I mean, it's like I even said to my husband, what should we have for dinner? And, and we're supposed to plan, you know, we're supposed to meal plan. And it's like, it's just nothing sounds good anymore. Nothing, honestly, nothing sounds good to eat a lot of times. And I have to go, okay, go to the store, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Well, that looks good. I guess that we're gonna move forward with that. But I do, I do struggle with in the beginning, you know, nothing looks good, you know, and now it's the same thing. And I eat, don't get me wrong, I eat because I have to eat. It's not like, oh my gosh, feed me, feed me, feed me. It's just, okay, well, you know, we're gonna have chicken again. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> I, my thing is, is how many ways can I cook my chicken? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice, easy right. source of protein. Good. I don't recommend for you folks that are, <coughs> you know, gonna start your soft textured food this weekend. 
I don't recommend you hard boiling an egg and eating a hard boiled egg. The whites are too rubbery oh. and the yolks are too dry. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody finds that one food, you guys, that is your go-to. Yeah. That is your go-to. Mine was refried beans. <laughs> I, uh, I told you all the story about my refried beans, you know, when my friend called and said, hey, do you guys want to go out to dinner? Okay, well, you know, I, I just kind of had some surgery. I said, yeah, I can figure something out. Yeah, yeah. So we go up to Don Cucos up in, in Acton, and we get there, and my husband ordered a drink, and my friend and her husband ordered a drink, and they said, do you want anything to drink? I said, no. Nope. Would you like water? No. Nope. And so they all ordered, and the, the guy says, and, and you? And I said, I want a small, the word was small, thing of beans. So when the beans came, the beans came. <laughs> and it was in, you know, like the big platter that they serve you on in the Mexican restaurants. I was like, um, 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 this is too much. I said, could you please bring me a small little bowl? He goes, I was like, just don't worry. I said, oh no. I was so worried that I was gonna eat all those beans. Not that I could physically do cool. it. Yeah. So they brought me the little salsa, salsa plate, you know, and I took one teaspoon, two teaspoons. And so my husband and my, my two friends, you know, her, her and her husband, they chowed down on their food and they were having chips and bean dip. And <laughs> there I was, they were all done, and there I was, still eating my beans after they had all polished off whatever it was they ate. Wow. Um, and they finished off my big platter of beans. <laughs> and there I was. There, are you done yet? Almost. Mm. He said, does it hurt? And I'm like, no, I'm, I have to think about it. And that's the thing. You don't always know if you're full. Mm -hmm. It's a hard, sometimes hard to gauge. Right, guys? And, and what do I tell you guys? Okay. If you think you're full, you're full. Do not, and you, and you know what, and I sit and I've probably told every single one of you guys, if you think you're full, you're full. Don't take that one last bite, because what does that one last bite do to you? It puts you right over. <clears throat> Keep that in mind, because that was one of the things I always would hear. I had a friend, he had his surgery, and he says, the one thing he goes, I always struggle with was my last bite. He goes, I always wanted it because it was so good. He goes, and how could I leave it? Because you know what, how many of us have been told, don't leave it on our plate, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and guess what? Don't leave it. leave it on your plate. If you yeah. leave it on your plate, you know, it's like, yeah. I, I was probably 30 years old when I realized, maybe it was after my surgery, 46 years old, when I realized that my mother wasn't gonna come and scrape up my plate and said, you know, she says, you know, there are four kids in China starting <laughs> to eat, China. and you know, she wasn't gonna take it and put it in the mail to them. You know, it was like I had that light that came on that says, my gosh, mom's been lying my whole life. You know, <laughs> they never sent it anywhere, you know. And no, I'm not gonna have to eat it for breakfast, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, remember, it's okay to throw your food away. Damage it, you're so right, damage it. Yeah. Especially if you go out, yeah. I have oh, to damage yeah, it. Yeah. What do you mean? So, especially if we go out, it's not going to be something I'm going to bring home because right. we're going somewhere oh, right. else. I, I take the whole pepper shaker oh, okay. right, right on top. Mm -hmm. And the first time I did that, I said, what the heck are you doing? I said, I'm messing it up so I don't eat it. And so you don't eat it. Mm -hmm. How many people's spouses oh, heck oh, yeah. get into your food? <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, you can't tell me that they don't because I've seen some patients after their, their spouses start on, you know, it's kind of like the mom who eats, you know, the mom who eats what's left over on their kids' plates, you know. Um. It's the ability to have your clothes fit differently. I have, I have a book. I have a book. When I ran marathons, I, I had a book that I actually, um, the, the thought process with this guy, it was um, Jeff Galloway, and he has a whole method of running marathons. 
when you run, he does a one, even when he ran, he did a run walk ratio. Mm -hmm. And you would go run three miles and they actually, I, I got the book and I even have it downloaded on my Kindle. So he would go out and run like three miles and they would figure out the time it took him to run the three miles and then they broke it down into what your, your um, run walk ratio would be. It really saves you. It really, really saves you. I remember when I ran, the last time I ran the LA Marathon, believe it or not, I did a one-one ratio. I ran for a minute, I walked for a minute, and I finished that marathon, the fastest time I finished it in just over like five, five and a quarter hours. First time I did it, I finished in over eight hours. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, I mean, just changing what I did, you know, it really made a difference, you know, and he has a schedule in the book and everything, so that would be good once you get to get that point and get that done and work for LA for 2017. You're there. Anybody else have anything exciting coming up? Anything cooking? non-skill victories because I think non-skill victories are very important. I mean, I, I'm going to just kind of throw off a couple different things. How many people went to the grocery store and didn't have to walk sideways through the turnstile to get in the store? Mm -hmm. Sit in a booth in a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And my friend and I were going to Hawaii to run the Honolulu Marathon and we we're sitting on the plane and she had surgery too and we're sitting there and she was fit. I said, so do I. <laughs> and we were making this big deal. And we looked at this man sitting across, excuse me. He looked at us like, who are these two whack jobs on this plane? <laughs> Would you take our picture? And the picture of us is holding our seatbelt, lapping over our arms. <laughs> and when he gave us the, the, you know, we still used cameras back then. When he gave us the camera back, my friend and I are looking at the picture. She goes, I think the guy thinks we're nuts. <laughs> and she goes, we fit. She goes, I didn't have to put the arm up, you didn't have to put the arm up, we fit. And that's huge, absolutely yes, huge. It is. Crossing your legs. Yeah, and I can tell you when people, there have been patients who have found collarbones and they thought something was wrong. I remember one time when I was working in the office, I got a phone call from a patient just crying on the phone. I think I have cancer. I don't know. What do you, why? What's wrong? There's these growths up at the, at, at the bottom of my neck. <laughs> I said, can you run your hand along towards the, to, towards your, you know, your shoulder? Yeah, I said, those are your collarbones. <laughs> I've never seen those before. <laughs> you know, I mean, those are the little things, you know, the little things where people don't recognize you. And that was actually always kind of fun when someone didn't recognize yeah. you, you know, you're like, oh, they, I, they say, I know you. I know your voice, but I don't know who you are. I mean, I think sometimes the non-scale victories are just as important as what the number, and sometimes I think yeah, more important absolutely. than what the number shows on the scale. And that's when, when you get ready to do your surgery, your plastics, that's why I think it's important that you take, we continue Boring. to take those pictures. Because, you know what, before is definitely a lot different than after. There, he's not here. There's a guy who came to his, um, his post-op visit, and um, he goes, and I, I mean, he lost like in two weeks, he lost like 35 pounds. Wow. And he goes, I just don't see it. I said, did you take a picture of yourself before surgery? He goes, yeah. So give me your phone. I said, sit how you were sitting. And so he just sat. And so I took the, I took, I took the phone and I showed him. And then we moved to the next picture. He goes, I do look different. It was my face. You know, mm -hmm. you know what? What you see in the mirror may completely lie to you, but you know what? What the picture what, shows yeah. is not the truth. Is is the truth? My husband. I saw a picture of my husband, and I was like, I don't. You know. I mean, I've been married to my husband for 30, 32 years this year. And 
I don't remember my husband looking like he looked in these pictures. And I was like, really? Really? I mean, and, and the other thing is, is he looks like such an old man. Yeah, I mean, he looks great now. And it's like, but the pictures don't lie to you guys. So that's why I encourage you to do those monthly pictures. I, my, my trainer requires monthly pictures. And she, she, we weigh weekly, we do body fat weekly, we do measurements monthly. But I'm talking, my, my, I, I, I bought, you guys are gonna laugh, but I bought a bikini just to take pictures so I could see every lump and bump. Mm -hmm. oh. You know, I yeah. mean, because I want to see what I'm doing yeah. to make that transformation. You know, yeah. to see the transformation, because you see it. You see it. You know, I have friends <laughs> who has, have worked with her in the past, and she would show me pictures every month, and progressively you can see the change. But to stand there, I, like I said this a couple times already, to stand there and look in the mirror, you, like you said, you don't yeah. see it. Yeah. But if you exactly. took a picture now, and you took a picture next month, you'll see it. There's it actually great. a syndrome. It's, it's actually, it exists. It's called body dysmorphic disorder. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Donna Redmayne wrote an article. Um, it's called, I might have it. It's called Mirror, Mirror on the Wall. I cannot judge my size at all. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you, you fit in regular size, you know, you fit in regular size clothes, but where do you go to shop? Blame Ryan, Catherine, Torrid. I saw a picture of myself one time. It was my sister-in-law's wedding, and I wore, I thought I was pretty darn cute. It was a skirt, and it had a, a bright kind of yellow little top with it, and a jacket that had the big old giant flowers. And I saw this picture, and I slapped my husband on the arm. I said, why did you let me out of the house like that? He goes, I thought you looked pretty nice. I said, well, then you're a fashion challenge designer. Yeah. <laughs>